Every day people pump almost 100 million tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, changing how the Earth naturally works. One idea to reduce the impact of this extra CO2 is carbon dioxide capture and storage, CCS. Here we take the CO2 we produce from our industries and pump it deep beneath the sea floor. But what does it do to the fish? That's what we wanted to find out. To investigate the impact of sub-seabed storage on the environment, an interdisciplinary group of scientists formed the ECO2 project. First, to find out whether a leak is likely, we went to CCS sites that already exist. And to study the potential effects of leakage, we went to natural CO2 seeps. Here, close to volcanic activity, CO2 escapes from the Earth's crust naturally, so we can see how the organisms are affected by, or adapt to, the changes. With the data we gathered, we assessed risks of CCS, developed monitoring strategies for existing sites, and defined guidelines on how to best protect the environment while storing CO2. During cruises to existing and prospective storage sites, we investigated CO2 levels in the water, the integrity of the sediment cover, and modelled seismic maps to simulate CO2 leakage. At existing sites, measurements showed no rise above the natural CO2 level, while at prospective sites, leakage scenarios were tested in the pore waters. On expeditions to natural CO2 seeps, the effects of carbon dioxide on the environment were investigated. We used micro sensors underwater to estimate gas transfer rates through the sites. To find out more about the impact of CO2, we compared samples of small organisms living under high and low CO2 concentrations. First experimental results showed locally changes to a diverse, healthy environment. Mollusks that usually live in the sediment came to its surface to die. And sea urchins lost strength in their spines. Laboratory work revealed different reactions of juvenile versus adult organisms to CO2 exposure. In adult organisms, feeding was reduced, but no mortality was encountered whereas the larvae showed a higher mortality rate. Over the course of four years, the interdisciplinary team of researchers worked together to build a data catalogue and visualise their results. Following this input, research cruises and laboratory work were planned. And along with biological and geological aspects, legal consequences and public perception were also analysed. With this knowledge, we hope to prevent leaks and minimise damage to marine organisms.